the greatest game has been played, the Grandmaster defeated, Grandmaster Prime rises above everyone. But is that really the end? What's up, everybody? I'm Stan, and welcome to Detail Comics, where we go over comics in detail. This is an I review, a show where I go over a comic book, its story, its art, give you my impressions, and let you know whether it's something you should go back to the comic book shop for or not. Make sure you subscribe to get more of these every single week. The book that I want to talk about right now is Avengers 689, which is going to be the 15th part of Avengers No Surrender. So this storyline, which has combined all of the different Avengers book into one particular title and is focused on the grand game between the Grandmaster and the Challenger, now calling himself Grandmaster Prime. And this one is going to take a twist that I wasn't necessarily expecting, and I hope you guys weren't either. So let's dive in and see what I'm talking about. Here we are, on the precipice. The conclusion of Avengers No Surrender is almost at hand. We're at Avengers 689, part 15, and what do we see? We see the champions. We see the champions rescuing people throughout the world. We've got Nova, we've got Hulk, we've got actually the Defenders here too. We've got Daredevil, we've got Iron Fist, America Chavez, we've got Nevada, we've got Ben Riley's Scarlet Spider, Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur are saving people on Long Island, and this is because the world engine has finally been slowed. We've got Sunspot and Hercules on there, we've got Thor joining in on that fight, that feat of strength to hold things together. Failure is not an option for these people, and what kind of god would she be if she wasn't doing her level best to help. Of course, this isn't necessarily the big deal. The big deal is that the Grandmaster is still alive as he materializes into this space where the Living Lightning and the Doctor are still there. And she tells Miguel that he has to go after him. This Grandmaster who has just lost the game, who has this unfettered contempt for the actual beings, the, the hosts of his great and grand game. The only thing that mattered was the game, and now the Challenger is actually on Earth facing down the rest of the Avengers. You've got Rogue, you've got Cannonball, they just blast into him. You've got Beast and Wonder Man, Brother Voodoo, Falcon, Squirrel Girl, she, she's out of stasis. Yeah, let's throw her in there too. And Captain America, Synapse, they're all leading this charge against an elder of the universe who is just back from his banishment, trying to combine their powers. Nadia has a great idea. She looks at Voyager, who has the ability to teleport as she tries to capture Grandmaster Prime, only to be incapacitated and unable to transport him into something like the sun or something along those lines. Of course, he's not just facing one kind of Avenger. The Beast and Brother Voodoo and Falcon, they leap into action. Janet Van Dyne tosses Hawkeye some arrows that have this acid that's going to be crawling through his skin. This is the conflict that they're in. This is the battle for survival that they have. But the Grandmaster is probably going to be playing the most key role. He is going to be doing the deals that are necessary for our heroes to save the day. And when Living Lightning makes his way into this kind of arena where they've been holding all these points, where you see Johnny Storm, where you see Black Dwarf, where you've got all these different people that have captured those pyramids. this is where the grand score has been kept. And the Grandmaster is heading away so that that way he might be able to challenge the Challenger to a rematch in a few centuries. He looks down at his daughter fighting alongside the Avengers, saying what a waste it is. Of course, Miguel has followed him along there, seeing this kind of thing, a total moral vacuum of person, and he challenges the Grandmaster to a game. He has a plan, and of course, this is the man that is the grand gamesman of the universe. He can't deny a game. We flash back to the Challenger who's actually looking Wonder Man right square in the face and just his eye beams blast him into his ionic energy, almost destroying him until Brother Voodoo can capture and re-encapsulate him. The Wasps, Janet Van Dyne and Nadia Pym, they're headed right into the eyes of the Challenger, blasting them with whatever pulses that they currently have, their Wasps sting. And when we bounce back over to this space station where the world engine's being held at bay, you see Miguel, you see the Living Lightning, you see him playing a card game with the Grandmaster as the cards left in the middle of the air, and what it comes down to is the inner monologue versus what the Grandmaster is saying. Because we only understand what Miguel is thinking, we don't understand what the Grandmaster is thinking, but he is a relatively blank canvas when it comes to these things. He has his full house, he sees what is on the playing field in front of him, and he's betting everything he possibly can. Miguel has wagered his life, and the Grandmaster wants more than that. He raises, he wants the planet, he wants seven billion trophies to be held as his prize. We bounce back to Earth where we see more of this clash of the Challenger. There are some key moments in this. We've got Synapse invading the mind of the Challenger, finding his pain centers and enacting them. Rogue jumps in there and tries to smash him. Cannonball immediately after her and then Squirrel Girl gets in on the action, leaving the Challenger to just explode this blast of energy radiating around him, devastating city blocks, leaving everybody battered in their wake. And that sets up the prime tension which is still, again, it's between Living Lightning and it's between the Grand 
Grandmaster, the final thing that he has to wager. He raises, even when the Grandmaster thought there was nothing left to raise, he raises his history, his elimination from all of existence. No one will remember him. No one will care about him. All he will be is a loser. If he's even remembered at all, nothing but a loser. And this is where Miguel gets into the internal mindset of what an Avenger is, or at least what he thinks an Avenger is. You know, this raise, bigger than a planet, is nothing. It's nothing that he cares about because they don't do it for the glory. They don't do it for the remembrance. Avengers do this because that's what they do. That's what being an Avenger is. It doesn't matter what people know that you've done. It just matters that the deed is done. And the Grandmaster being this moral vacuum doesn't have an understanding of doing things without the recognition, without the trophies, without the winning, without the understanding that he is better than everybody, which is what causes him to fold. And that is what wins the game for the rest of the Avengers, freeing the Human Torch, freeing Red Wolf, and giving them a sense of hope. However, there's still the battle that's raging on Earth. Will there still be an Earth left to be saved? You see the Avengers, and the only thing that Beast knows is that Voyager has the ability to manipulate memories, make these Avengers remember why they do these things, why they are Avengers, what they have achieved so far, what kind of greatness that they're capable of, that there is no time to retreat. They look death in the eye. They do not surrender. There is no surrender. And Scarlet Witch starts calling upon her powers, these magical words that she has given power to, with the Avengers at her back, basically striking down the Challenger with everything that the Avengers have to offer, whether it's Johnny Storm recently arrived on the scene. Rogue's powers, the teleportation of all these individuals to the surface so that that way they can finish this combat, this devastated elder of the universe laying there on the ground, seeming to be lifeless. And the Earth, because the Grandmaster had made this bargain, pops back into existence. We see Captain Marvel and Alpha Flight on the space station outside where it used to be. Everybody has been returned. Everything seems to be fine. There's no more devastation. There's no more breaking or cracking of the Earth. There are some things that they need to recover from, but a lot of this has been undone. And this isn't the conclusion. The conclusion happens in 690 before we get into the brand new Avengers number one from Jason Aaron. And that's where we're going to see the denouement. We're going to see the explanation of everything that's happened in this Avengers storyline and what the real conclusion to Jim Zub, Al Ewing, and Mark Wade's real Avengers run is. This no surrender arc has built towards this final climax as far as the conclusion, as far as the combat is concerned. But the real story that's going to be told is what happens after the fact. What is the consequence of these actions? What happens to these teams? We already know that there's only one Avengers team that's going to survive, and it's only going to include very few of these people that were part of this event. What happens between now and then that makes that happen. And that's the question that we're going to have left for 690, and I can't wait to see what that is. But I want to know what you guys are really excited for in Avengers 2, so hit me up in the comments down below so we can start that conversation. As always, if you like what you see, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to get more news, reviews, and commentary on comic books, comic book movies, comic book TV shows and games, and anything and everything inside the world of comics.